Good evening, everyone. And um, this is Jamie Green, the host of the Let's Talk Destiny talk show. And I'm excited tonight to have my family members join me um, as we come together to recognize the ninth, what would be the 93rd birthday of our father and grandfather. Uh, the one and only James Frederick Green. And so tonight we're just going to get together for a few minutes to recognize him, to honor him, and um, to just share some memories for a few minutes. A lot of times, well, most of the time when we mention his name, people automatically go into this whole story about the apostle. And they start talking about what a great man of God he was and a great teacher of the word and stuff like that. And all of that is true. But I wanted to get together with my family to talk about him, not the apostle, not the pastor, but the father, the grandfather, um, the friend to some of us and you know stuff like that. So I have some questions written down. I'm gonna ask you, but I want you guys to feel free to um, just respond, whatever's on your heart about pop pop. And um, when you're talking, don't forget you have to unmute the phone. And, and when you're not speaking, you can mute it. That way we can keep the sound down. All right. First, I want everyone to think about this and then I want you to share. <clears throat> what is your favorite memory of daddy? Who wants to start? Christian. Okay. Uh, I have to say my favorite memory was when I don't even know how old I was when he'd be sitting on the couch and I'd crawl behind the couch and use his head as a bongo drum. Now that that was great. And I liked that my mom got mad at me but he didn't. That's a good memory. I remember that because you would crawl right behind him, sit behind him and just tear his head up like a drum and he never said anything because you know his response to the grandchildren was way different than it was to the children but yeah I remember that question great memory what about you Tavante so we had technical difficulties I'm mutant but uh I'll probably say the best memory was my senior year um, when he came to my basketball game. He didn't come to no games, but uh, he just, for some reason, he just wanted to come to my senior game for some reason. Um, we actually ended up winning by like 30, and that was actually um, the last time I actually got to see him alive. Uh, I think like two days later that he kind of, you know, he knew it was his time. Um, so he ended up passing away a couple of days after that, but that was just a good memory. Him to come out and watch my senior night game. Um, yeah. Thank you, Cervante. Um, that that is a great memory. You do have your dates a little mixed up because he was in the hospital about five or six days before he died. But I do remember him saying to me, James Cena, I want you to help me get dressed so I can go watch Trey play ball. And I was like, Daddy, it's cold in the gym. You know, he had a lot of trouble with uh, circulation. He was always cold. So I kept trying to get him to put it off, put it off. And he said, I want to go now because I probably won't be able to go again. And I thought he meant because it was getting really, really cold. But apparently he knew he had some insight into the fact that he would be leaving us a few days later. So that's a great memory, Trevante. What about you, Joy? You got a memory that you want to share about Papa? I have a lot, but my favorite one used to be at the church, and I would go to him, and he know I wanted something. What do you want, Joy? <laughs> Can my friend come over tonight? <laughs> Always wanting somebody at the house with me, and he would, even though he really didn't want it to be, he would let somebody be there. And just always wanting to be with them, you know, basically I live with them and being around them, you know, that's all I remember. Just always asking for something and he would never say no. That's basically it. Miss him dearly. 
Yeah. He would he wouldn't come right out and say yes. He always had to yeah. have a sermon before. But the whole you know he was gonna do it anyway after he got finished. Right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. All right, Kevin. What are we what about you? What's your favorite memory of Papa? Um I got I got a few just chilling with them when we used to just sit at the house at Bullum House. I used to love doing that because she always told you something that was basically he was basically schooling you. But one of my all time favorite is like of course when he like when he used to preach and have a roasting session and just start roasting everybody in the congregation. Like that was one of my favorite because that was funny to me. But like yeah, like just being with him is good enough for, for me. Yeah, it was fun when he was roasting people as long as it wasn't you, he was roasting. When he started calling your name out, you'd be like, oh my God. And some people, like poor sister Shirley Walker, she got it every service. Bless her heart. All right, Kelly Green, uh, what is your favorite memory? in the world i'm thinking because i'm like joy there are just so many but i think if i have to say the most um tender moment was again i think i've shared this before when i got pregnant with kevin and i was it was the summertime uh, when i found out i was pregnant with kevin so i wasn't going to school but um, I had me and mom knew she told daddy because I was afraid to tell him and I heard him walking down the hallway and I knew he was coming to my room and in my mind I just had this image of him telling me uh, get out <laughs> just like get your stuff um, but he just opened the door and he said your mom told me that you're having a baby and I said yes sir and he said, well, Kel, you ain't the first and you won't be the last. And he closed the door. He never said any more about it. Like he would ask me like snipes that they were going to church. He was like, do you feel like going to church tonight or whatever? But it was just, I saw, I saw a dad, like so many, for so many times, you know, I saw him as just the, the preacher who was my dad but I actually saw him as my dad then. So I, I really, that sticks in my mind a lot. Absolutely. And that, those are the kind of things that what you guys are sharing tonight are exactly what I wanted to share tonight because we have memories as family members that other people won't have because all they knew him was as Apostle Green or Brother Green, then he was, uh, he was Brother Green, then he was Bishop Reverend Green, then he was Bishop Green, then he was Apostle Green, but to me, he was always daddy. And so I wanted us to share that. Now, I want y'all to think about this and be honest. I don't try to make up anything. What characteristic do you think that you take after daddy? Well, I don't take nothing first. from nobody. Oh. I don't take nothing from nobody, and ain't nobody going. Good. You know, that's and how he was. He gonna speak his mind. He's gonna say how he feel. So that's what I'll say when it comes to me. Don't take nothing. I think I'm like him like that. And talk more. Like I'm more like telling you how I feel, and I express myself a little bit more, whether you like right. it or not. That's definitely James. Trevante, I saw you were ready. Uh, I think I took after the fact that, um, like, if you're not inside my friends circle or family circle, um, Pop Out didn't really like people. Um, I think that's where I'm at too in my life. Uh, yes. If you're not in my friend circle or my friend, I don't. Um, <laughs> we gotta uh, build a relationship. If it wasn't about church or. But about my mom, Pop Up didn't like people that wasn't in the family. That is true, because that was one of the things that we used to say 
that they were so opposite. Like mom was always want to be around people. She was a real people person. She liked talking to people. But I remember, ever since I can remember, when daddy left church from preaching, every house we lived in, um, he had a room that was his, didn't he, Kelly? And after church, he would go to that room. Mom would take him his food. He watched football and ate peanuts. And he didn't want to be bothered with a whole bunch of people. And so down through the years, I've had people say to me, you know, don't you get tired of being home by yourself or... And sometimes I think about how many days have passed since I actually saw another human being. And sometimes it bothers me, sometimes it doesn't. And I think I got that from daddy as well. Name one thing that you think you got from him, Kelly Green. You're having trouble walking. I can't really think of anything. Yeah, okay. We'll come back to you. Yeah. Because I can think of a whole lot. What about you? What about yeah, you? Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too, George. She needs that front. What about you, Christian Frederick Julius Wallace? Uh I kind of got mine taken. I, I don't I was I was gonna say the whole people thing because I've kind of been a social hermit most of my life, but uh I don't know. Uh, I we can say the say, same thing. It's okay. Well, then I'm taking trades. <laughs> <laughs> taking it. That's all right. That's fine. What about you, Dry? I can't see. Him. Where is he? I don't even see him anymore. Oh, there he is. Name one characteristic you think you took at the pop up test. Jaren. That's hard. That's hard for me. It is? Yeah, because I think I'm more like my mom. Okay, well then just I, I don't think I say, say anything after him. I can I say what I think I took after daddy. Huh? Yeah. Can I say what I think Kevin took after daddy? Oh, you can say what you think Kevin took, but you can't think of nothing for you. <laughs> That's mighty suspicious, think, ain't it, Kevin? I think Kevin took up. that strong. I know, cause every I don't know why I don't have good reception. Hold on, I was doing fine. I've been doing zooms all day. Okay, so Kevin has that strong sense of family, like. Like, even though he's not, like, doing a lot, he stays in touch with his children a lot. Like, it, he, you know, it, every time I turn around, like, he's talking to them, or he's like, I just got finished talking to Midgey or whatever. And daddy wasn't, like, that father who, like, took you places and did stuff with you. But we always knew he was there. And I think, I think that's what Kevin got. I think Kevin has a strong sense of, his children, like, like daddy was very protective of his children. So I think Kevin had that, has that. I have to agree, Kevin. I have to agree with that. I think one of the reasons you might have been having a trouble thinking of something is because of daddy's outspoken personality, very um, domineering. When he walked in a room, before he even opened his mouth, his presence just consumed the whole room. And so you probably thought it, when you think of him, you think of that. So that's probably why you say you didn't take anything after him. But that whole family thing, daddy was definitely a family person. Like Kelly said, he wasn't that emotional, give you a hug, you know, giving you kisses and holding your hands when you came around. But he was always asking, where's so-and-so? Anybody seen, check on that boy, check on that girl. And when you came around, he made sure you never left without money. Even if it was five or ten dollars, he just had this thing about, you know, he because he said to me one time, I asked him why he always did that. It, whether it was the children or the grandchildren, he would say if it was the little ones, he'd say his five dollars, his ten dollars, whatever. And he told me one time when he was growing up, he knew what it felt like to be hanging out with his friends and they would go in the store 
and he wouldn't even have money to buy a soda or a bag of potato chips. And nobody would volunteer to buy me anything. And they would say, you're not buying anything. And he'll just say, oh, I'm not hungry. I don't want anything. But actually, he didn't have any money. And he said he just didn't want his children and grandchildren to be walking around with people and not have their own stuff. And I think that's something that Kelly and I, as um, his children, got from him because it disturbs us greatly. And that doesn't mean for y'all to call us and ask us for nothing when we get off this call. Let me tell you right now. And don't come out here in this room and ask me for a dime tray. But we do not like knowing that our children don't have what they need. It disturbs us greatly. Even if we fuss it, just like daddy, if we fussing at you and, oh my holy God, didn't I just give you money yesterday, blah, blah, blah. And the whole time we're trying to figure out how to get that money because we just can't stand it knowing that our children are, are need something and we can't provide it no matter how old we are. Um, so yeah, those are all things that we got from daddy. Now I want to ask you one more question. Well, I got two more actually. Think oh, wait a minute, Jamie. Jamie. Yes. Before you move on, I did want to say something because Daddy's, while he did have a strong sense of what he wanted for his family, he wasn't a very emotional person with expressing it, which I think the boys in our family got that from him too. Um, but they, they are, of course, genuine in their love and commitment for you, even though it's not a physical expression all the time. And I think Daddy felt like he really missed something. Um, and he would talk about it in his latter years of how, you know, he wished he had spent more time and done more things and things like that. But it, it was a part of like his makeup. He he just wasn't that person. And because of that, then. So in essence, I feel like I got that from him. Thank That's you. all. Appreciate you, Maud. Okay. So the next question is, honestly, now we're all being honest here. How do you wish your relationship with daddy had been different? Christian. I can't answer that. Okay, go ahead, Mom. I will answer the mine first. <sighs> because I was so much like daddy, um, we didn't get along until I was a lot older. We had along in our opinions. And I just wish that I had understood the reason why we had that conflict. Because at 14, you know, I still remember saying to mom that I just don't think he likes me. And my mom was like, of course he likes you, you're his daughter. I said, no, he loves me, but he doesn't like me. But what it was, was we were two bulls hitting like this all the time. And I didn't realize that until I got older. And I think if I had realized that that wasn't him rejecting me as his daughter, but him you know, recognizing himself in me, I, I, we could have, because we had a great time in the last years of his life. I, I feel like we had a great relationship. And I just wish we had gotten that earlier if I had understood why we were so um, at odds. What about you? That's my own. That's a very good answer and it's very uh, accurate, Kelly. Thank you for your honesty. Christian, do you think you're, you wish anything about me, your relationship uh, with Pop Pop had been different? I feel like everything in our relationship was pretty perfect besides the amount of time that I knew him. Like I didn't get to know him when I was older. So I never really got to have older type talks with him. I only knew him when I was a kid and I didn't have a lot of worries. But like if high school, we probably would have been different, but yeah. I never got a chance to talk to him then so and yeah. right now with your first full flown full-fledged relationship with a girl and a woman or whatever 
uh, that would be like a totally different conversation that you could have with him that you weren't able to have because you didn't have a full fledged girlfriend when he died. That is. Yeah. yeah that's what, what, what is the topic at hand? The topic is pay attention. That's what the topic is. I'm here. I'm locked in now. The topic is uh, what one thing we wish that uh, was different with our relationship with Papa. Thank you, Christian. Very good. No problem. Nothing, actually. Nothing? What about you, Bells? I think Bells can't hear me. What about you, Jaren? I think we have a lot of issues. Hold up. Oh, Lord, help us. No, basically, I just wish my relationship was pretty good with him for real. Like, I can't, I, there's nothing I can complain about about the relationship that I had with him because, you know what I mean? I basically lived with them most of my life. So, like, uh, I didn't really do much, you know what I mean? That would really change, but maybe I wish I'd have maybe listened to him a little more when I was younger. And uh, paid attention. Yeah, other, other than that. Like the uh, older boys, um, not just the boys, but you and Byron and Trey and, Chris and uh, Joy, not Christian so much because he was much younger. I think that if you all had paid more attention to what he was trying to tell you as far as his life experience, um, it would help you even now that he's gone because you could play back some of the things that he said. Because I hear a lot of people saying, I wish Apostle was still here because I really need to talk to him about X, Y, Z. And I, my response is, if you remember what he said when he was here, he would be telling you the same exact thing now. So I think that, as I remember, um, the memory that sticks out of my head is when Barack Obama was elected president. And Trey and I were sitting in the living room with Daddy watching, um, watching the inauguration. And I looked over at Daddy, and he was—he actually had tears coming down his face. And Trey was just looking at him like, "What in the world's wrong with him? Like, what is he? What's he crying about?" And so Daddy briefly was trying to say, "I never thought I'd live to see a black man." be president and Trey just had this look on his face like he didn't get it because what was he like 18 17 at the time 17 so he didn't understand that daddy grew up in the south um literally not allowed to drink from the same water fountain as white people he grew up um when he had to go to back doors of restaurants to get food where he wasn't allowed to sit in the restaurant with white people. So because you all didn't know that part about him, because at the age you were when he died, you didn't listen to those, um, those um, stories that Kelly and I listened to. That's why you missed a lot that you could probably be using in your life right now. Even the story about the, the mashed potatoes sticking to the roof of his mouth. Like these are the stories that we kept hearing over and over that you are, even if you were in the room with him talking, you probably like let it just go over your head. But he was talking to us about being so hungry that he took some um, boiled potatoes. Well, he stole these potatoes that somebody had sitting up cooling off, right Kelly? And he was so hungry, he stole the potato, went under the porch, and shoved it in his mouth, and the potato was so hot, it burnt the roof of his mouth. And so for the longest time, he wouldn't even eat potatoes. But, but every was, time we went out to eat, if you have potatoes, he would say, you better make sure they cool off. That's right. Boy, I'm telling you, if they stick to the roof of your mouth, I'll be like, here we go. Good story. Tell With the roof story of again. <laughs> yeah, so I just, it really stuck in my mind that day when he watched the first Barack Obama inauguration and he, and I, 
you know how when he would start crying and his lip start shaking a little bit. And I happened to look over at him and he was crying literally. And Trey was just looking at him like, what in the world, what is going on? But he didn't understand, he wasn't old enough to comprehend and he hadn't heard the stories about what it was like to have to cross the street from white people come and stuff like that. You all read those stories and well, I don't even know, they probably weren't even in the history book because they try to keep as much of our history out of the book as they can. I'm sure you heard about it, seen movies about where black guys, young black guys couldn't even look white women in the eye. Daddy grew up during that time. And so those are the stories that I remember about him. All right, one more thing, and then I'm going to let you all say whatever you have to say, and then we're going to get ready to go. I really appreciate you all taking time for this because this is another thing that we talk about. When daddy and mom were living, we did so much more stuff together. And since they've been gone, now everybody's, you know, doing their own thing, and we don't really have time for each other like we should. I appreciate you all doing this tonight. Now, my last question, and then anybody else have anything to say, you're welcome to say it. I'm in the process of writing a children's book that I started way back right after daddy died. And when Hassan visited me in July, <laughs> he said to me, Nana, you started this book when I was a baby and you haven't finished this book yet. What are you doing? So, you know, I wanted to pluck him in the head, but he's telling the truth. But one of the things that I did, and I did this with Christian also, Christian Pettit. Right after Daddy died, I asked each one of those boys, tell me something that they would like, they wish they had done with, had time to do with Papa. Like Malik, Hassan was only five, Malik was six. I think Christian was what, eight or nine? Um, so when daddy, died, so I said, if you could have, what are some stuff you would have liked to have done? So they gave me a whole list of things. So I've been supposed to be writing this book with each grandson, um, spending a day with Papa and, uh, it's a fiction book, of course. And then it's what they did that day, what their adventure was with their Papa that day. And then at the end of the book, all five or six or seven, however many grandsons it is in the book. He takes them all somewhere together and they spend together the day together. And then a few weeks later he dies. And he but he leaves a memory for each grandson and he leaves a gift for each grandson. So this is the book I've been working on for 10 years. So y'all pray for me that I'll get it done. But my question is, what is something that you wish you had done with Papa before he passed? My answer would be. I take this trip to St. Augustine where he was born that we were taking ever since we were kids. Every year we were here, I want to take y'all to St. Augustine and show you where I was born and we never got there. So my thing would be to take a trip to St. Augustine. What you got, Trevante? Uh, I just wish Papa could have met a kill. Maybe that's what's wrong with him. He, need, he needs his grandfather in his life. Honestly, I think that whether we want to admit it or not, there's a lot of James Green in a kill. Yeah, that might be what's wrong with him. He needs a great granddad in his life. <laughs> Leave my grandson alone. What about you, Joy? What's something um, that you wish you had been able to do with Papa before he died? You probably would be able to answer that with my mom more, but um, is there anything that you wish you had been able to do with Papa? place you'd like to go or something you'd like to have done with just him. Right then. Can you hear me? I think we lost joy. All right, what about you, Christian, while we're waiting on Bells to come back? Uh, if it was me, honestly, uh, hitting hitting on the ladies, uh, oh, I need you to explain that. What the? What? You want daddy to take you to hit your hit on a lady? What? 
Yeah, like we could go out and he could teach me his tricks. Like, I don't think they told you how my how Papa got my mom. It wasn't, it wasn't a good one. That's not how to get it. It wasn't, was a, it wasn't a good trick. <laughs> Action he ain't had trick. No game, bro. About. It was a good trick because he ain't had no, he ain't had no game. Because he did have game. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to be talking about my daddy. Listen, mom was singing in a band. That's why I'm yeah. saying people always want to talk about their apostle and their pastor, but they wasn't always saying. Mom was singing in a girl band and daddy was in the military in Dover and mom was singing in a club and daddy went to the club and saw mom sing. But then it was a, one of the other ladies in the band wanted daddy, didn't she, Kelly? Yeah, but then he saw Essie and it was over. Now, of course, when you ask them the question, daddy said mom followed him around like a puppy kept like trying to run him down and blah, blah, blah. And then mom said it was daddy, the one that was chasing her down. So we never did hear the story right, whichever one. What I'm hearing is chased down. Either, either way, they got what they wanted. So Christian said he just wanted to know how to have that quiet game. Like you ain't got to be all loud and all that, but you still get the woman. That's right, Christian. I hear, I feel you. Shut up, Christian. Christian. Google, ain't you already booed up? Why you need to know that? Ain't you already booed up? I, I it was just something I wanted to do in the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get them, yo. Because you didn't know how what how you if you were doing it right, Christian. Well, he got it. He liked her for two years before he even said anything, so he probably needed Daddy to tell him <laughs> how to get the game up. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Now, now, wow, now we throw my business out there like that. that that's absolutely wild. Yeah, because I was unaware of that fact, Christian. Wow. That's you know why what? he needed, that's why he my... needed daddy. Oh, that's all right, Christian. Take your time. Take your time. He did. He took two years. <laughs> Be quiet, Trey and Kevin. Signs. That's because y'all be switching up every 30 days. Be quiet. Nah, they get a three-month contract with me. That's sad. Anyway, I enjoyed you all. The one that Anybody? stayed the longest, I got a kid by. You got the what? The one that stayed the past for three months, I got a kid by now. See, ain't that something? Because how many times did we hear, Kelly, I want a, a son? How many years did we hear one. that? You heard it once. Oh my God, you are fall out. Stop lying. You kept saying it and then you even posted it on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I remind you every time you fuss about a kill. Which y'all roasting or something? Huh? Y'all roasting people or something? We all take a shot yeah, at that, each other when we get off this room or something? I'm cracking again. <laughs> Okay, I'm, we're the oldest family. We're the oldest. I'm just saying, you get what you ask for. You get what you ask for. Every time you talk to him, my boys is having sons, and this one having, and I. And then he said, "I said, I am sick of boys. Like I have two sons, and at the time, four grandsons. I said, I am sick of boys." This Trey said, "I'm gonna get you a, a granddaughter." I said. You need to get me a daughter-in-law first. Then you get me a granddaughter. So he I didn't do no, nothing no I said. He got the he got the son and he still ain't got no daughter-in-law. And I Kelly, what she said, you're gonna fall right out line. Ain't say I'm gonna get you no granddaughter. Help him, Lord. Anybody else have I'm anything not... else you want to share about Papa? And my I really would was... like for us to do this again for my mom. Can you hook and picture daddy at 93? I can, because he looked good for his age. You're probably looking like Kevin got his hand up. Yeah. When people ask me how old he was when he died, and I say, they were like, really? So your dad did not look that old. 
He didn't look at what they should. He didn't look up at that shit and watch him getting up and down out the chair. Ah. <laughs> Yo, that was so you know what Byron said, um, his favorite, I was talking to him about what we were doing at night. He was really excited about it. And when he calls, whatever time he's allowed to call, I'm going to record him sharing his uh, memories of Pop Pop. No, you um, ain't. You ain't. That'll take away your visitation. Don't do that. No, I'm not um, video chat. I'm going to just. Oh, but don't record that. That's good. That'll take away your visitation. Yeah, no, I ain't going to do the video chat. But. Um, he said that one of his main memories of daddy was when daddy always didn't want nobody sitting in his chair. And Byron said he would hear daddy coming down the hall, so he would run and get in the chair. And then daddy would come <laughs> tapping him on the head, saying, all right, all right, all right, get up here, Rab, get up here. <laughs> and he said the whole time he tapping, he said, get up, get up, get up, get up. He said, and I thought that was so funny, and I would just keep doing it because I know that's what he was going to say. And I could picture that. You remember that, Kevin? Don't see, see you next year. Uh -uh. Yeah, I, I remember because he used to tap me too and be like, all right, all right, now come on now. You know, you know, this is my seat. And this is funny because everybody knows I have a chair. And Trey told Byron, he said, Mom got a chair just like Papa. She don't want nobody sitting in it, and she got all her stuff in, in arm's reach so she don't have to get up. And the only person that gets in my chair and won't get up is Akil. I go in the bathroom. When I come back, he's sitting in the chair, and he'll look at me. like, and He want me to know that he see me, that I'm looking at him, and he still won't get up. Bless his little heart. But yeah, there's some good, we had some good times. And this is why I think that if we spend, I think we're at the point now where we could talk about mom and dad without breaking down. It took us a while to get here. Because I've asked several of you, and I'm going to ask you again now to see what your answer is. Who is ready to watch videos of mom and dad? Christian is. Well, I guess it depends on when, because I was crying today, right? So some days I can, and some yeah. days I can't. And I was so, just crying the other week. Yeah. Sometimes you think about them and you, it hits you all over again. I cried Saturday, so I ain't ready. I mean, we go I mean, I'm not talking about I'm not saying, crying. Yeah. I'm saying there's certain days that I know I'm not in the emotional state to watch, to watch it, but I would like to see some though. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell y'all this. Like to I'm gonna tell y'all this um, story. When Christian raised his hand about um, when I said who's ready to watch the videos and I thought about it, I asked Christian because I also had asked him for help with this book that I've been writing since Jesus was a baby. Um, what he felt about, you know, when mom and dad died. And it really, and what he said to me was so honest and so important that I actually wrote it down to use in the book. He said that I really didn't understand what was going on. Like I knew that they were not there anymore. He said, but only thing I really knew was everybody around me that I loved was crying and was sad. And I couldn't really understand why they were sad. And I thought about how we just don't really pay attention to the youngest ones in the group because we think they don't really understand what's going on. So we don't want to talk about it. But one time when I was living, right after mom died, I moved to Virginia with Christina and the boys. And so one day Malik was just crying, just to crying. He was like six years old. I mean, just oh, bawling. So I'm holding him on my lap. And I said, oh my God, what's the matter? And he was like, I miss my mom. I miss my mom. I said, oh, I said, well, my mom's gone to heaven. Like, you know, you don't know what else to say to a six-year-old. You know, my mom was sick and now she's not uh, sick anymore. He said, and I miss that candy she had at church. I'd like to die. Because you know, mom had that little bowl of those soft peppermint. And then he started crying again, like hard. 
So after he got himself together the second time, I said, Malik, did you miss my mom or do you miss the candy? And he said, I just miss both of them. And that thing, I mean, I hollered. But at six, that's that's what he remembered most about mom was candy. Uh, I think that sometimes we need to think about little things like that and laugh and smile. And it's okay to cry. I read um, somebody said yesterday, you don't get over grief, you get through grief. And you actually carry it with you. But you just respond differently uh, the longer that, you know, because I don't want you to ever make let anybody tell you that you can't cry, that you can't be sad, you know, that was your, that was our father, that was your grandfather, whatever. It's okay to mourn them, but you can't just stay stuck there. So that's why it's important to think about sometimes the funny things that um, he did that keep us going. Anybody else have anything you want to say before we close out? We done lost two soldiers. I was getting ready to say, because when I went like this, the soldier, the um, Sony, the us four on here. I'm still here. And then there were none. Yeah. I know you are. Yeah, yeah. We see you, and baby. Mommy loves you for that. Mommy baby, loves you here. for Bless that. Bless his heart. That's another one. I don't know where he got to go. And Joyce, she got bad wife or something. Yeah, and Trey, he's here. Out, he, you know, he's up, he's uh, preoccupied. He's here. We appreciate you. All right. Anybody have anything you want to say? It's our kids have ADHD. I love y'all. We love you, Christian. It's good to see you. Oh, Happy we love you too, move, move. Glad you got up and joined us. I feel old. We you may are. have to send we may have to send Norman to up. Oh wow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Look at my neck. Maybe I can cycle you. All right, Trey, you have anything you want to say before we close out? Oh, wait, my mic's done. <laughs> oh, my God. What are you doing? Make sure I look good in my casket. <laughs> you don't want to. What? <laughs> Who said that? Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. I just saw that movie yesterday. I just watched it for the first time. Hey, yeah. hey, Jamie, I just watched it like last week. And that's what just, I, and Trey used to always do it. That was just made me think about it. Cat Williams sake. Hey, what Cat Williams say? Hope I'm not doing the mic. That's it. And then he fell out. You know what I mean? Have a good night. <laughs> Hey guys, in all seriousness, this was like, not it, it was just barely like a little over a half hour that we spent some time laughing and talking together. We have got to, that's something that we, we keep trying to say to you guys. At the end of it, family is gonna always be there no matter what. So whatever relationships you're in, whatever other things you're doing, make time for your family because this was really nice. Today was like a, an emotional day for me. And so today I'm really, all jokes aside, I am so overwhelmed that you guys are on here. And even bells, you know, to even come and participate. It's just, it's great. I wish we could have got Stormy on here. Yes, my darling, you don't have to raise your hand. You're not in school. I, I agree with the sentiment. I just wanted to say, you said a little over 30 minutes. Uh, it, it's almost an hour. But oh, I'm um, see, I had so much fun, I lost track of time. I just wanted to throw that out there. Like, I agree with the sentiment. I'm just saying, this is like a <laughs> I'm just saying, like, <laughs> we we now we just kind of fooling around, but it's just great, you know, that you guys, you know, at the end of it, we're a small family. This is all we got right here. I don't got nobody else, Trey. Trey, go get your mom. She's fallen. She's fell out. Look. Hold on. <laughs> Trey, Trey, go get your mom. She done fell out. You gotta even go look at the phone. 
He looked at it. He kept right no point. He had a lot and emotional person at all. I always ask, I don't know how any of these women um, find my son, either one of my sons attractive. Like, they're not well, emotional. We don't believe in equality. That, that oldest one of mine, I can't get near kiss, but my baby boy, he shows me love every time he sees me. Yeah. All right. Kind of be like, mom. I'm like, Negro. Hello. Who take calls from? Was Byron. An inmate at a Maryland correctional facility. This call will be recorded and monitored. If you wish to block any future calls of this nature, dial 7 now. To hear the cost of this call, press 9 now. To accept this call, press 0 now. For billing, it's... Thank you for using Global Tail Link. We need a better Zoom. I've been kicked out about six times. Hey, Byron. And Say, I thought it was me because okay, I was everybody be quiet for a minute. Say hi to the family. What's going on? Hey, What's up, Christian. Say Can hi to Byron. Oh, hello, Byron. <laughs> I thought yeah, I forgot I wasn't oh, I was no, really breaking up. All right. Well, it's Christian, Trey. Aunt Kelly, Kevin, and Joy on the Zoom. And we were doing the thing for daddy. So they all said, bro. What's up? Every time I tell little bro what's yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So everybody finished? Yeah, I guess. I love y'all. All right, yeah, love you too. All Thanks right. for um joining in. I appreciate you guys. All right, we'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. Kev. Okay. Love you, Chris. Love you later. Love you, Kevin. Love you, Kevin. Bye. Uh, love you, Kevin. Whatever your name is, Trey. All right, bye. See y'all. In the bedroom. <laughs>